If you look at the national statistics, there are roughly about 14,000 people uh, in this country that need a liver transplant that are on a waiting list. And the way livers are allocated are essentially is the per person at the very top of the list uh, is given the next liver uh, in that area. And the way you get to the top of the list is based on medical urgency. So the sicker you are, the higher you move up on the list there's a certain chance that that patient is never going to get to a transplant, they will succumb from their liver disease before they get to the top of that list. And that uh, waiting list mortality, we call it, is roughly about 20 to 25 percent. So a living donor transplant essentially involves removal of a part of a liver of an otherwise healthy individual and transplant that into the person who needs the transplant. And the reason we can do this with the liver is that the liver has a lot of extra capacity. So you don't need all of your liver to do everything that the liver does. You have a lot of extra. In fact, you could donate up to 75% of your liver and still have normal liver function. We want to try to promote living donation, and uh, and often we hear uh, that that someone is interested but is not able to donate for various reasons, and those are what we call the barriers uh, to to being a donor. Barriers we divide them up into what we call the direct barriers and, and the indirect barriers. Direct barriers are essentially the costs associated with the transplant surgery. So the cost of the hospitalization, the cost of the surgery, or the cost of follow-up are borne by the recipient's insurance. But the indirect costs associated with donation, and those are specifically things such as travel, lodging, time off work, so it's good to have resources in place that will help to offset or remove those indirect barriers or the indirect costs to, uh, to transplant. You want to help someone and I have to pay to be able to help someone? It just doesn't make sense. So we want to eliminate all of those uh, costs associated with donation. The recognition that this is covered under the FMLA, uh, the recognition that this is a major procedure, that this should be time off work that should be allowed, is an important step because it allows us to tell donors that, look, this, they don't have to worry about their job, they don't have to worry that they may not have a job after they do this.